Hi everyone, Kate here for a Friday Reads. So as I mentioned before, my husband is finishing up graduate school. He will be getting his PhD very soon. And so it's all incredibly exciting. We are very much in a time of transition right now. Um, so I, something about having a straightforward Friday Reads video, just tell you what I'm reading really appeals to me. So I would love in the months of July and August, as long as things don't get too crazy to just do Friday reads. And then I don't even know where we're gonna be in September. So <laughs> we'll see what happens in September. But I just like the idea of checking in with you, having it be more chatty, because I love those um, when people do a, like a weekly check-in video. I love to hear from people kind of how their week was going. And uh, yeah, just talk about talk about life and how it's been going. Um, one thing, our downstairs neighbor, his smoke detector had a low battery and this happened while he was on a work trip. So we texted him about it and he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on a work trip. And um, like, do you want me to send over a friend to turn it off? But we thought, well, it doesn't bother us that much. And then like a week goes by and um, we realize we have someone coming to visit and they're going to be sleeping on this floor where you can hear constantly the fire detector when the really loud air conditioning isn't on. Um, and I don't know that they would be able to sleep. So he came back last night and he fixed or thought he had fixed the smoke detector, but it turns out it's just a really old one. And so then sure enough, like today, it's just going beep beep, beep, super regularly. But that's not the worst thing that happened. Um, he came home and like the ceiling over his dining room table had flooded. And so when he was gone the whole time, he didn't realize there was flooding happening. And obviously we didn't because we live up here and everything looks normal here. Um, and so he told the repair people and um, they haven't been here today. So I don't know what they're planning to do about it. And I don't know when they're planning to do something about it. We have turned off the hot water in our kitchen because it seems that when that's on, there was more water coming down. And um, then we can't use the dishwasher. That's what it is because the dishwasher only takes hot water. So I, I, anytime they wanna come and look at the fallen in ceiling, that would be great. Um, but honestly, nothing would surprise me about the people that we rent from. Um, cause we had also talked with them about maybe renting month to month after a lease goes out the end of August. And they just said, we don't do that. Read your lease. So not really surprised about any of that. You know, I honestly, I'm not surprised no one showed up today. It usually takes them a while to get their, their butts in gear. And like there was a time when the water heater broke in the basement, which is two floors below us. So we didn't have running water for four days because it took them four days to get somebody out to fix that. So nothing will surprise me about these people. It's not much of an inconvenience to us. Like our ceiling hasn't collapsed in. And I mean, it hasn't totally collapsed obviously because it's normal up here, but it does worry me like, when are they going to work on this? Um, so hopefully us turning off our hot water in the kitchen will help things. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's our excitement. But we do know that while the smoke detector has been beeping this whole time, um, we're usually kind of on the boy's case, like don't run around too loud. It's too loud for your neighbor downstairs. And, um, we haven't been saying that while well, we can hear it beeping because we know he's not home. And so they can kind of run and stomp and they've just been jumping off the couch repeatedly. So they've been loving it. The beeping is getting really old, but they've been loving it. Uh, yes, so hopefully that will get <laughs> resolved. Um, and let's see what I am reading. I'm going to be starting after I finish um, the six Harry Potter book, which I have two and a half hours left of. And I've been avoiding finishing it because I know it will break me. It is going to be so sad. Um, after I finish that, I will be reading The Yellow House by Sarah Broom. And this is a memoir from a woman, a black woman in New Orleans and the history of 
her family's yellow house over the course of a hundred years in New Orleans and kind of the evolution of the city. I think it will be really interesting to see that kind of to know a city for that long and to see kind of race being a big dynamic of it and um, class, culture, all of that. And I mean, a well-written, compelling memoir um, can just be some of the best reading that I will do in a year. And I'm really, really intrigued. And um, yeah, so my plan is to embroider while I listen to that. And I will show you my embroidery. It has come along since I showed it in the reading blog. Okay, let me take things out so they won't fall out when I open this up. Okay, so here we are. So you can see I have like, you know, maybe as much as 85% of the actual wreath itself done, which is so exciting. I have to remind myself that when I feel daunted by it, I've really done uh, the vast majority of this embroidery. Um, so I just need to put in some more green um, in here, some green trim, and then do the bottom of it and then put their names and anniversary. In case you didn't watch my reading blog, this is a wedding present, a very late wedding present for my sister and her husband. It will be their third anniversary this year. What happened is I made a embroidery originally for them um, when they were first married and I didn't follow a pattern. I made my own pattern up and it looked drab at the end. It just like, I was not proud of it. I didn't, I, I was not proud of it. And I want to, if I'm going to give a handmade gift, I want to be very proud of it. Um, so really excited that I'll almost be done with that because then I have, um, my brother got married last year. So I'd like to make a uh, wedding embroidery for them. And then I also had promised a um, name bunting for Katie from Life Between Words for her Marigold, which Marigold is a very long name. So I definitely need to, <laughs> to get to work on that. Um, but it's really fun just to listen to audiobooks and do that. And um, so yes, hopefully The Yellow House um, is just like a really compelling read. I would love to get really caught up in a memoir and really just learn a lot. Um, so kind of what this fam this black family's experience living in New Orleans um, over the course of a hundred years has been like. Then I am still stuck in um, Playing for the Ashes by Elizabeth George. Um, reading this with Kate from the novel Nomad. We have touched base now and are just, we just are such fangirls of this series and Elizabeth George has really kicked um, kicked up the scale of the story several notches between um, the first few books in the series and now this one, which is 650 pages, such a long mystery. And I mean, I am so enthused about the length because I know that she has really been intentional about, she has about six different storylines that are interwoven into here and um, kind of seeing how they're all going to be slowly woven together is just going to be fascinating. I really do, like anyone that loves modern literary fiction um, and is looking for crime fiction to read, Elizabeth George would be the first author I would recommend. There are other authors, a whole list that you know I would recommend, but Elizabeth George would be my first um, kind of instinct to recommend. I just, the amount that you get to know, obviously the main characters, but the amount you get to know the side characters as well. I'm in awe of Elizabeth George as a writer and seeing um, the different themes that she deals with in here, like class and gender um, and religion in some of her books. I don't know if it's going to be much in this one, but it's just such um, a rich, decadent series of detective novels. And um, I love seeing the, there are very clear character arcs in here. The characters do not stay stagnant and they feel so flesh and blood to me. So I'm loving seeing this um, and the pain that they feel, I mean, I feel as well. She just makes these characters so very real to me and um, yeah, just loving it. So I'm around 170 pages into this and I will be, um, I will be um, reading a chapter a day of this 
And then I am currently reading aloud to Peter and of Green Gables, and we are loving it. We have been laughing out loud so much. And since my husband is working from home, when I read before um, quiet rest time, he's up there and he, he'll end up listening actually to a fair amount of the chapter that I'll read for about 20 minutes or so. And it's so fun to laugh aloud all together to it. Um, and it has just really shown me I would love to continue with the series. I have never read the entire Anne of Green Gables series. And I um, got stuck in Anne's House of Dreams. That's how far I got. And I think that, what do I want to say? Like Anne of Green Gables to me is a literary masterpiece. I, it's a stunning work. And whereas the other books I think are fun for Anne fans um, that maybe don't hold up as well as those, don't at me, Anne fans. Um, so I think I just didn't feel ever as quite as drawn into those books. And I want to try them in audiobook format. I think that could be really, really nice. So um, I think I will, after I finish reading aloud Anne of Green Gables, we have other books we're going to read. And I don't know that um, a little boy would enjoy the later books in the series as much. Um, uh, so I just think we'll just read Anne of Green Gables. Um, and then I really, I have some other summary type books I really want to read to him that I'm very much excited for. So um, Gone Away Lake and Return to Gone Away Lake. Um, those are, I think Gone Away Lake won the Newberry and they're by Elizabeth Enright and these children that discover this old lake town that is now a swamp and it's, um, or an old lake resort that is now a swamp and these old Victorian villas and these beautiful houses. And they're almost all abandoned except for two of them by people that were children when their families vacationed there and now live in them. So I have been a while saving. I knew the first time I wanted to read Gone Away Lake and return to Gone Away Lake with him was in the summertime and I've been saving it for when I thought he was ready. So I knew last summer I thought, ah, I don't think he'll quite enjoy it quite enough. This summer I think he's, he's ready. So I can't wait to read those with him. And then I would love to read The 21 Balloons um, and yeah, just see, see what happens with that. Okay, then now on the other hand, some things, like I said, the and books, maybe I would enjoy more in audiobook format. Some books though, don't work as well in audiobook format. And I found that out about This Rough Magic by Mary Stewart. This is a buddy read I am doing with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts. It's her first Mary Stewart and it's so fun to revisit this one. This I think is my favorite Mary Stewart suspense novel. Um, and I started the audio, I had purchased the audiobook, um, and I just kept missing things. I was really having trouble like tracing everything that happened. And so for some reason, it's weird because mysteries, I find like the Maisie Dobbs series, the, um, Armand Gamache mysteries, um, uh, Agatha Raisin, I love hearing those in audiobook format, but for some reason, the Mary Stewart ones, I don't know what it, maybe it was the narrator because I thought I liked their voice, but then I felt like I missed so much. Um, so we'll be reading um, this over, I think over the course of a week and I just have picked up the physical copy of it now and it's so lovely to be back here. This takes place in Corfu. Lucy Waring is visiting her sister um, and they uh, you know, are just doing the kind of summer Corfu scene going down on the beach, but then it takes a turn and they find a body on the beach. Um, it's a fabulous story. Now in this, there's a fair number of references and the title itself, This Rough Magic, is a reference to Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Both Sarah and I have not read it and I told her how there's a three or four page section within this uh, one of these chapters where they're going back and forth talking about the Tempest. And I said, you know, I would have gotten a lot more out of that had I known what happens in the Tempest, had I been familiar with the plot. And Sarah said, you know what? I just, I'm gonna watch the play. And I, I was able to find the play too. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna watch the play too. And I'm gonna read along while I watch it. Um, I'm, Shakespeare is one of those authors that I'm like, I'm always meaning to read more. I've read four of his plays um, and I want to, read more of them. I keep, like I said, keep meaning to, and then it just doesn't happen. And I just know from people that love Shakespeare, like they love Shakespeare. 
And I did look up kind of the general plot of The Tempest and it sounds really cool. Um, I don't know much about it, but I just know um, they crash on an island. So it sounds really great. And I love just Sarah is so cool that she would think to, you know what, let's like do our homework so we can go back to that chapter and kind of understand what is going on in it. Um, yes, so really a treat to reread this, a treat to read it with Sarah and yes, very exciting. And then a little teeny, teeny um, thing that I'm reading that is Mr. Harrison's Confessions uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell. So for those of you that have watched the Cranford miniseries, the Dr. Harrison line, um, plot line is not in the Cranford book. There's a short story called Mr. Harrison's Confessions that is woven into the Cranford, um, Cranford miniseries. But I have never read the short story, and so I'm reading it with a lovely group of ladies, including Megan Hannett and Christy from Dostoevsky in Space, and, um, oh, or Megan the Story Girl. That's Megan Hannett's channel name now. And um, then... Claire, who is a lovely subscriber, who's become a dear friend over the years. So it's really lovely to read um, with those ladies. And um, we're all really enjoying it. I read the first chapter. I loved it. So we're going to read a chapter a day. And it's only, it's a very, um, it's got a bunch of chapters to it, but it's also only like 46 pages. So we're really taking it slow. But I think it's really fun to do that because then you feel like you have more time and freedom to read other things while you're also doing that. Um, let's see if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. Well, I have several other videos I'm going to film now, so I think I will leave my Friday reads here. Thank you for watching everyone, and I hope that you enjoyed this video, and let me know what you are reading this weekend, and I will be back for another video soon. Bye!